Today we're solving problems when you're shooting at sunset. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNacer. Today we're doing some really cool things. We're gonna be working in Photoshop, but we're also gonna be talking about a lot of principles when you're actually shooting at sunset. There are a lot of things to keep in mind that are going to be a little bit different from when you're shooting in the daylight, like high noon, and uh, we're going to cover those things, and I'm going to show you guys how to fix some things in Photoshop as well. So we're working on an image today by Scott. Awesome image. He won our contest for the lens flares, and he won a Flurn Pro. If you guys want your images edited on Flurn, all you have to do is enter our contest every single week, and you could win a Flurn Pro as well. And there are a couple of things that are really great lessons here that I want to talk about on shooting at sunset because it's it's difficult and for the first, I guess, probably three years of me taking photos, there's some things that I didn't really quite grasp. And once I did kind of understand these things a little bit better, it helped me to take photos at sunset and sunrise quite a bit better. So really two things and they both have to do with color. Um, first is that when the sun is in the sky, it's like in the middle of the sky, what you get is a light that's a lot more blue because it's reflected around the blue sky and that's what strobes are balanced to. So if you guys are using strobes, they're gonna be balanced to about 5,600 degrees Kelvin or daylight. And so if you're shooting in the middle of the day, you don't have to put gels or anything on those lights. They're gonna be the same color as the light from the sun. Now, as the sun sets, it gets warmer and warmer and warmer. So you get like the sunrise is warm and then it gets cool and then it gets warmer again. So warm is like yellows and oranges and reds, things like that. So anywhere between sunrise and sunset, you're gonna have those like warm colors. And what you wanna do, two things you can do to make sure that you're actually like capturing those warm colors. First is make sure your camera's not in auto white balance. I don't shoot auto white balance pretty much ever. And the reason is I wanna capture the actual light that's in a scene. You know, if you're shooting in fluorescent lights or something like that, go ahead and shoot white balance. But if you shoot, shoot in auto, and it'll kind of correct for something like that. If you're shooting outdoors though, and it's the middle of the day, you can shoot at 5,600 degrees Kelvin or using the flash setting on your camera. That's what I usually shoot in. At sunset, the same setting is going to render a warmer image. But here's the thing, it should be rendering a warmer image because it actually is a warmer light. So if you're shooting at auto white balance dark when it's later in the day, it's gonna say, oh, this image is too yellow, let's make it a little bit more blue. So what you're gonna wind up getting is an image that's just a little bit more blue. Also, you wanna make sure if you are shooting towards the end of the day that you balance that as well with your strobe lighting and that you make sure you put a gel on your strobe. So it's a warm light coming from the sun to balance that color temperature, you wanna make sure you put a warming gel or a CTO gel on your strobe. And that's just gonna help everything come together. So if you guys are shooting at sunrise or sunset, take off that auto white balance on your camera. It's not gonna do you any good and make sure you're shooting, if you're using strobes, put a CTO gel on your strobe and it's gonna help warm those colors up. So we're gonna take care of some of these things in Photoshop, but if you guys are shooting, those are some big suggestions for you. All right, this image by Scott, it's a great image. There's really, like he's done a lot of really great things and he's done a lot of things right, but those are a couple issues that we're going to kind of like take care of here in the image. And just a couple of other things that like I kind of noticed about, about this, but all in all, like it's a, it's a really great image. So there's like, I'm nitpicking here, but um, that's, that's the fun part. That's what Photoshop is for. Okay, just a couple things. I would really like to see some more detail here in, you know, in the rocks and things like that up here and down there, and maybe a little bit more detail in the sky. We've got some dodging and burning and things like that going on, and we're gonna kind of work with that to give it a little bit more of a, a little bit less contrast, a little bit more of a natural look. And to start off, it's really not that difficult to get that detail back. What we're gonna do, I'm gonna hit Command J on this background layer, and then I'm gonna go to Image, down here to Adjustments, and then I'm gonna to go to shadows and highlights. And that's gonna give me detail from both my shadows and my highlights. So let's click on that. And here we can see we've got our shadow highlight dialog. Let's just hit command minus to zoom out so we can kind of see everything that's on our screen. So we can change how much detail is gonna be here in our shadows by dra dragging this slider up and down. We can change what's called our tonal width to see like how much it's actually gonna wind up affecting. Now I'm gonna go ahead and be a little overzealous in here and try to get a decent bit more detail here in our shadows. You can do the same thing with your highlights. So you can pull that up and it's going to try to give you more detail in your highlights as well and change your tonal width. We're just gonna bring that down as well. So you can see by adjusting the highlights, we're able to get quite a bit more going on in our sky. Let's just bring that down just a little bit. All right, and we'll see what more detail we can get from our, from our highlights. Very cool. Now color correction, I'm gonna to wanna to push this up. The reason is when something is in shadow or in highlight, you tend to get things that are a little desaturated. So when things are properly lit, they're a little bit more saturated. We're gonna just pull our color correction up and that's just going to saturate the image just a little bit more. 
All right, we're gonna hit okay there. And we can see we've got an image, it's a bit more flat now, but we've got information here, especially in the highlights and the shadows. So let's just show you the before and the after with that. And you don't have to take it like just like this, but we are gonna be doing quite a bit more work on this image to kind of like bring everything together again. But you can see a lot of detail you can get back from that shadow highlight filter in Photoshop. It's a very good one to use. All right, the next thing I wanna do is kind of focus on that, what we talked about, that like bluish color that we get in this photo that maybe should be a little bit warmer because we're shooting here at sunset. So I'm gonna kind of target these rocks first. We're gonna make an adjustment layer and I'm gonna to go to curves. And now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab my blue channel and pull this down a little bit and that's gonna add more yellow. So blue up adds more blue and the opposite is yellow. So pulling that down is gonna add a little bit more yellow. There we go, and here we're gonna go to a red channel and pull that up a little bit, and that's gonna add a little bit more of the reds. So we're already adding like the blues and the reds into the image. Now this doesn't have to be visible ev everywhere. I'm gonna hit Command I on that layer mask, and then I'm gonna paint this basically visible um, where my rocks are. So this, the ocean and everything like that, that can stay nice and blue. You know, you, you can use layer mask to kind of decide. This should be over your subject as well. There we go, kind of warm her up. She's basking in the sunlight. She should be a little bit warm. All right, beautiful. And a little bit of warmth here on the sky. Cool, so we can see just that turning this off and on, just kind of kind of warm up that area, which, um, you know, it makes sense because we've got a, an area that's uh, going, you know, here at sun, sunset. It should be a little bit warmer. Okay, the next thing I wanna do is kind of take care of some of this area. Um, it's a little bit light right over here. I think we get a little bit more natural um, fall off from the light. So what we're gonna do is grab a curves adjustment layer. I'm just gonna, Go over here and grab my topmost slider and bring that right down. And that's gonna bring my white point down, basically making the lightest point in the image a little bit darker. Now, here on my layers, I'm gonna hit Command I again on my layer mask, and I'm just gonna kinda of even this out here a little bit, painting this white here just along this area there. There we go. And that's kinda of even that out, and we'll paint this right there a little bit too. That's just gonna cause a, like a little bit less attention to the rocks that are underneath our subject here. Uh, the reason is it's gonna look, it's gonna wind up looking less like lit by, you know, an octobox and it's gonna wind up looking a bit more like it's a natural light. The next thing I wanna do is kind of darken her down a little bit. She is a little bit too bright in comparison with our scene and, and the rocks behind her. So we're gonna grab a curves adjustment layer and I'm gonna click here in the middle and kind of drag that down just a little bit. There we go. And hit command I as well. And then we're gonna paint with a white layer mask right on here. And darkening her down is gonna bring out some of her natural color as well. All right, trying to not focus on the shadows. But you can see I'm not doing like a, you know, very intense job with my layer masks or anything like that here. I'm not, I'm not so focused on making these, all these selections perfect. I mean, if I hold Alt or Option, you can see that's what my layer mask looks like. It's not that great. It does, really doesn't need to be. We're just getting it, you know, pretty close and um, we're just kind of doing some color and some light correction here. It will just change that opacity just a little bit. Okay, next I'm gonna add some darkness to the front side of the rock. So we're gonna grab a curves adjustment layer and I'm gonna bring this down. There we go. And I'm gonna hit Command I and we're just gonna put some of this, you know, here in the front side just to like show that maybe there is more light coming from behind uh, than in front. There we go. And I can kind of pull that opacity down just a little bit as well and you're gonna get some reflection off of these waves down here on the bottom. So the light is gonna hit the waves and reflect back up. So just make sure it's not like super dark here because, well, that just wouldn't really make a whole lot of sense. Okay, already looking great. Now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and warm up this area of the photo as well. Again, we want that warm light to kind of come through. So we're going to grab an adjustment layer. Let's go down to curves as well. A lot of this you're seeing, like curves and levels. That's a lot of what you guys are gonna be working with in Photoshop. We're gonna grab our red channel and pull that up a little a bit just like that, and a blue channel and pull that down. Now if you guys don't get these perfect, it's not a big deal, you can always go back and change these. I'll show you how in just a little bit. Okay, here we've got our curves. I don't want this to affect the entire image, just kind of like a nice radius around here where the sunset is. So I'm gonna use my marquee tool and make a nice selection right about there. It's gonna include our subject, it's gonna include this light. I'm gonna hit Command I, that's gonna invert what my layer mask is. So it's making the areas that were white, black on my layer mask basically making it invisible. And I'm gonna hit Command D to deselect, and I'm gonna hit Command I again. So basically I've got my new curves adjustment layer, and it's only visible right there in this area. Now it doesn't look great because we need to add a blur to it to make it blend into our image. So we're gonna go to Filter, down here to Blur, and to Gaussian Blur, and we're just gonna choose a very large blur. Something like that looks great. So we've got, it looks a bit more natural here, 
but we do have it that like nice warming coming from the sun. Let's go ahead in here. I'll show you how to change it again. Let's say you wanted it to be, um, you know, a little bit more red. Well, you can just go back in here. So here's your layer mask. Here's your layer. Just double click right here. This will bring up your curves adjustment layer. Go back to your red channel and you can pull up your reds if you want or pull down your reds. You can see all the cool changes you can make with a curves adjustment layer. All right, we'll just pull that up just a little bit and then I'm gonna to go to my blue channel and pull that down just a little bit more. Okay, and now I'm gonna to go to RGB, which is just your lightness. It's a combination of all three channels and we're gonna pull that up in brightness just a little bit. There we go. So we can see it's not affecting our whole image. It's based here around our light, but it does do what we want. Next thing I wanna do, I'm gonna add like a little bit of a like mist or a little bit of that like overspray or that light kind of fog coming back over as well. So we're gonna use our brush tool and I'm gonna grab this color here from our background and I'm gonna paint white right over top. There we go. Well, it's not white, it's the color from our background. It's kind of like that mist that's gonna be coming from the sky. We're gonna make sure we change our mode to lighten because we don't want that to darken anything. It's supposed to be like a nice light. Next, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put a layer mask and I'm gonna go to image and down to apply image. And this is gonna help it blend with our image because you can see right now, it doesn't look like it's blended. It looks like it's Photoshop, doesn't look great. So we're gonna image and down to apply image and we can see it, what it does is it takes a snapshot of your image and applies that to the layer mask so it helps to blend your lights and the darks. You don't really have to click on any of these settings. Merged, RGB, multiply, all these are cool. We can hit OK. There we go. And you can do it again if you want it to blend in a little bit more. So we're just going to click on this layer mask, image, down to apply image. There we go. This will work anytime you're trying to add a light source to an image. You use this apply image. It, that's what it's there for. It's just, it's just great. I recommend it. Use it all the time. All right, looking good. Now, we're already looking great. There are a couple more things. I'm just gonna warm up the whole image in general. So we're gonna go up to our curves adjustment. We're gonna go down to our blue channel and I'm gonna pull this down just a little bit. It's gonna add a little bit more warmth to our image. And let's go to our red channel and pull this up just a tiny bit. Okay, and let's just bring that down. So we're overall, we've got a nice warm effect on our image as a whole. And I think it's looking great. Let's just make this area with the rocks and things like that, just a little bit darker. We'll go to Curves Adjustment Layer. We're we'll gonna kinda come in here and bring that a little bit darker. That's just gonna bring that nice contrast in there. And then I'm just gonna paint with like a very large soft brush here at about a 10% flow. There we go. Let's see what that did. Just kinda like brought that contrast up a little bit more in there. And it's okay if it covers the model too a little bit. She's supposed to be in the scene, so having some of the light fall on her from the scene is not a bad thing. That's a good thing. All right, looking great. Well, that's about it, guys. So we did a lot of things to kind of like battle the shifts in her color temperature. Remember, we wanted to warm things up. She was a little bit, uh, just a tiny bit too light on those rocks, so we brought her down in color temperature. We kind of changed that contrast that was going on with those rocks, and we kind of worked with the color temperature that was on her as well, that was from the strobe. So let's just take a look at the before and after. I'm gonna shift click all those Hit Command G to group those together, and we're gonna click on this before and the after. So you can see, it's, it doesn't look like a huge change as you're actually doing it, but here you can actually see there's the before and there's the after. See, with the effect here on the rocks just kinda makes her like stand out a little bit too much, makes it a little bit less natural. And there's the after. We've got a much more natural effect going on. And again, it's a sunset, it should be warm and um, solving some problems here, guys. So. That's, I really hope this guy's helped you out, guys. There's some things that you can do. Again, we talked about in camera, how to solve those problems in camera, but if you do face some of those problems, you can definitely fix them in Photoshop like we just did today. Thanks so much for watching, Florent, and Scott, thank you for, so much for submitting your image, and you did a really great job. I, uh, I hope this helped out a lot. Thanks so much, guys. We'll learn you later. We should go out and take a picture of me in a bikini on the rocks. That'd be really funny. Actually, I don't think we want the whole internet throwing up.